show the world that we can get along and we can be friends. And it doesn't matter what your background is. We're human beings and love one another because we go into the same place. We serve the same God. Jesus saved us. We got the same Savior. Come on, church. Let's just thank God for fearless right now. Thank God for this church. I, I was reading about Paul and when I was reading about him, and just the way he, he carried himself, preached the gospel, and he was always just dusting his feet off and getting back up again. And he just kept, he was a guy that just didn't know how to give up. He didn't take no for an answer. He didn't care if he was persecuted. He didn't care if he was beaten. He didn't care. He, he, he just would somehow, he had this mission that he was going to see people that were lost be revived and be found. And as I was reading, I thought, man, he is so much like my father. My father, he's been in ministry for 45 years. Come on, that's pretty incredible. 45 years, 46, I think, actually. And, and my dad has been through so much. At three years ago, y'all know, my dad had a cardiac arrest. He had, at that time, died eight times, died, came alive, died, came alive. I mean, it was back and forth until finally the, the doctor said just, he has every life support machine on him, and um, they, they gave him no, no chance of living, and then there's a whole miracle that happened, and he, his kidneys started working, his brain started working, his heart started beating, and he's living and breathing. He preached his guts out last week at conference, and, he, and he's preaching the gospel. The first thing my dad, this is why I thought he reminded me of Paul, the first thing that he did when he got out of the hospital bed was he goes, Christy, I cannot wait to get in the pulpit again. And I just go, Dad, are you nuts? Do you want in and out first, or do you want to do, do you just want to go in the pulpit? And he, no, I just cannot wait to preach the gospel. I can't wait to share what God has done in my life. And, and time Time and time again, my dad has modeled, I, I think, this picture for me um, of who I want to be like. In fact, I saw this funny thing, if I could show you all on Instagram. This is not too long after my dad's cardiac arrest. This is kind of the fortitude of my dad. This is the way he lives his life. He's like, if devil, if you try to knock me down, I'm going to get back up. Look, I have to, I have to show you guys this. Watch. years since I did an upside down push up. I haven't been able to work out because of the cardiac arrest and all the different things I had. So today, this is the morning of the 70th birthday. I'm going to see without working out if I can still do an upside, an upside down push up at 70 years old. Here we go. <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. <laughs> One. Two, three, four, wow. five, six, seven. Seven. seven for seven. seven. How about that? For so Woo. That's pretty good there. Look at now, honey, I would like to invite you to take off your shirt and show me how you can do more. Because my, my dad was like, no, just tell Jeremy he can't do seven like me. He had to tell everyone. Listen to you guys. My dad... He's been through two heart attacks. He's been through a cardiac arrest where people said you have no chance of living. After that, he had valley fever that doctors said would kill him. After that, he had cancer that he got healed. He has never quit. He keeps getting back up. He keeps going, I'm not going to give up. And this is what it looks like to be a modern day revivalist. It's saying, enemy, you can try to kill me, but what doesn't kill me makes me that much stronger. Guess what, devil? I'm still here standing. I know you tried to take me out. I know you tried to kill me with depression. I know you tried to put me and get me a nervous breakdown, but guess what, devil? You're not going to keep me down. I'm going to shake the dust off my feet, and I'm going to keep running. This is the type of revivalist that's in this church. Come on, are you with me? Can I hear you? Yes. This is Paul. This is Paul, and I just hope that this kind of spirit that's on him is just kind of released in this house today, that he had this commission to go, it was much like a service 
maybe like this, teachers, prophets, pastors were there. They put their hands, laid hands on him, the Bible says, and they anointed him and they said the Holy Spirit told them to speak to him and, and anoint them for a special work in which they're called. They went on all these uh, missionary journeys. And so the first one is in Acts 13, 4. The Bible says, so Paul, Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. Don't you love that? It says Barnabas and Saul. Now sometimes I'll say Paul because a couple of scriptures later, he is referred to as Paul. Saul was his former name. Saul was when he would just cut throat. He would kill Christians. He was a crazy gangster. Now he's a gangster for Jesus. And so Jesus called him Paul. It's much like Gus. He didn't kill Christians though. I love Gus. Is Gus here? I love you, Gus. Yes, gangster for Jesus. Anyway, okay. Um, so here we go. We have Gus, and we have, no, we have Barnabas, and we have Paul. And, and they were sent out by the Holy... God will always call us, sometimes even alone, but how many know that he will always have our call connected to somebody else? It's never by yourself that you're to do... In fact, the, the whole pop-up upstairs that my husband did, this was a dream he had, and he was called to do this book, but that pop-up did not happen unless there was a divine collaboration with other people getting involved, with other artists and other people. This church would not happen, or this conference wouldn't have happened. Maybe me and pastor had a dream for it, but it took a lot of people we're connected to. So those that say, I don't need God, I don't need church, I don't need other people, no, 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 no. If the vision and dream you have only affects you, it is not from the kingdom of God. Come on. It is from God when you can go, I need you. So turn your neighbor, say, I need you. I need you. Barnabas and Paul together, they went out by the Holy Spirit. And I love it because they continuously say in scripture, he, they went out by the Holy Spirit. God spoke to them by the Holy Spirit. And I think that's important because when you feel like in the call that you want to quit and you feel like you can't make it any longer. And Christy, when you get to Los Angeles, it's gonna be pretty hard and it's not gonna be easy. In fact, you're gonna have a lot of people, even pastors say, you shouldn't do it in downtown Los Angeles. You should do it in the suburbs because it'd be a lot easier for you. When people try to talk you out of it, you will not be talked out of it because you remember you got a word from the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit spoke, guess what? It's not a good idea. It's a God idea. And if it's a God idea, I can hold through the times where I feel like I can't make it through. Lord knows that Paul needed the confirmation that he, the Spirit of God sent him out because he's about to go through hell and back and that's the only thing that kept you some of you it's been a good idea you have to go back and go is this a god idea god needs to speak to you so you're not shaken when the heaviness the call is not easy somebody was telling me the other day talking to me the other day and crying and uh, I, god called me to this but this is happening financially this is happening this is happening this is happening. I said since when is the call comfortable since when is the call convenient? Since when is, I've experienced, Pastor and I have experienced this firsthand. It's not easy. And that's why sometimes God holds us off from releasing certain things in our vision because they're so heavy and they're going to be so difficult. He knows who you need to be in order to hold that. And so he will have you strengthened right now. He's strengthening you right now. He, I don't know who that's for. That's not my message. But right now, you might be like, I wish I was there. No, no, no. Don't wish for that. Wish for God to create the greatest person inside of you. The fortitude you need. The strength that you need. Come on. You need to have some faith. He's, he's doing it right now. I wouldn't be the intercessor I was or the prayer warrior or the worshiper I am today if it weren't for the times that I was in the middle, in the wilderness, in the process, not at the promise, in the process. So guess what? I have to get new eyes on this in between. I have to see that if he hasn't done it, if I'm not married yet, he doesn't want me married. If I don't have that job yet, he doesn't want me to have that job. If he wanted me to have it, he would give it to me. So God, I trust you right here. So they were sent out by the Holy Spirit, so they went, they went. They did not ask for more visions of clouds in the sky. They didn't ask for the fortune. Have you ever opened a fortune cookie and you're like, that's it, God spoke to me. No, 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 that fortune cookie will not be good for you when things get hard. That billboard sign, I've had many, many people. The billboard confirmed it. No, 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 
Stop looking for billboard signs. Look for the word of the Lord. Look for the word of the Lord. And, and so they went. They didn't waste time. They didn't wait for resources to line up. They didn't wait for all these other crazy, lofty confirmations. They went. Time to go. They went. And the Bible says this. They ran into this first, this first encounter, which I was thinking, man, they're kind of rookies. They're new. Is this going to be something easy for them to do? Maybe they'll, they'll, you know, God will just ease them into this whole journey. No, no, no. The first encounter is crazy. A governor asked them to come preach the gospel to him. And the governor had a sorcerer that was his right-hand guy with him. So Paul and Barnabas, as they're preaching the gospel to this governor, he's getting rocked. He wants to give his life to the Lord. The sorcerer, at the same time, is trying to talk them out of giving his life to the Lord. So that's what he keeps doing. He keeps coming. That's what the enemy will do. It's God's voice, and then the enemy comes in, and he shouts. So he's coming in the middle of this, and this is where we come in the story, where he's talking the governor out of giving his life to the Lord. Acts 13, uh, 9 through 12. Saul, also known as Paul, was filled. This is so important. This is so important. Was filled with what? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, it's, I love that they want to make sure you're aware that before this happened, he is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. He's not filled with a lot of seminary classes. He's not filled with a, a lot of past experience even. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. That's all God needs right now. You're going, do I have to go to Bible school? I love Bible school. My husband's done it, but you don't have to have that as a prerequisite to walking in the anointing and the call of God on your life. Can I hear an amen? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked at the sorcerer in the eye. Come on, there's confidence when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he said, you son of the devil. Okay, do not say that to any wives. Do not say that to your husband. I really wanted to, as I was reading this, my husband left his dirty clothes. Oh my gosh. It all, you know, my dirty clothes hamper is right here. And he put the dirty clothes ladies on top of the dirty clothes hamper. I'm like, honey, you know, you son of the devil. No, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. So you, you son of the devil, if the Bible says it, can I say it? <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Marriage counseling we'll do next. You son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud and enemy of all that is good. Will you never stop perverting the true ways of the Lord? Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you. You will be struck blind. You will not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly, instantly. Come on, when you speak like this, it's not sometimes delayed. It's just in a moment you get free. Uh, instantly, mist and darkness came over. This is the sorcerer's eyes. He began groping around, begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. Come on, this is crazy stuff. When the governor, what did he do? Oh, when he just preached to him and he told him the gospel and that's it. No, 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 no. When he saw what happened, he became a believer for he was astonished. No longer are we in a day and age where people want to just hear about what God's doing. They want to see a demonstration of the power of God. If we're going to see people awakened to the souls and people see, be revived, it's going to take people that are walking in the anointing filled with the Holy Spirit, raising the the dead calling out demons it's going to take people that are not just preaching to people the words are okay the gospel is good but people are no longer want to hear it they want to see it they want to see it in action I'm all for programs, but guess what? We need the power of God. We don't need more programs. We don't need any good preaching anymore. We have had great preaching. I don't want preaching that tickles our ears, does nothing for our hearts. I don't want lukewarm Christianity. I'm tired of a watered-down gospel. We need people that are walking filled with the Holy Spirit that are saying, guess what? I'm going to see supernatural miracles break out because I'm not in a church. I'm outside of the church. I'm seeing it in my workplace I'm seeing it in my neighborhood and this is what his first missionary journey was I can't go through all of it but this was just one thing that happened it was the power of God they went from place to place mobs would come after them in the street they would run them down the street they shook the dust off their feet and they just went to another city man that's that's pretty awesome that's pretty cool. Like, he, he actually, he got stoned, the Bible said, stoned to, to death where they thought he was dead. Paul just gets back up. He goes, 
to another city. I thought, man, Matthew 16, if you want to be my disciple, not if you want to be saved. How many are saved? Yeah. But if you want to be my disciple, follower of Jesus, this is beyond that. I want you to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The third step doesn't happen until you do the first step. Deny self. Selfish we are. Actually, my husband broke up with me. He told me I was selfish. You know what? How dare you? I'm still hurt and hurt because of this. When I'm preaching, I always can get him. He said, you're selfish. We... I said, no, I'm not selfish. And he goes, yes, you are. I'm breaking up with you. Listen. Yeah, wow. Can everyone just go, wow? Just wow. That was pretty low, honey. <laughs> he said I was selfish. I'm like, no, you're selfish. You shut up. Okay. Uh, I was, actually. I just wanted to do my own thing and do my own. I would be some little pop star. It was so stupid. And, um, yes. Um, and it was good for us, though. That was, that was the best thing that ever happened to us when... When God just allows things like that, that's not part of my message, but some of you may be going through that. We're going through a breakup or you're going through a season where something's broken. And um, it was for me. It was for me to grow. I was, I was selfish. Um, there was a lot of things that was about me and what I wanted to do. And this is why the scripture is so important because it says deny self. And in a, in a world where just, you know, Instagram, it's just selfie after selfie after selfie. And I'm 42, so I, I mean, I wasn't in the generation. I think the younger generation is the, more the millennials. Y'all are used to doing selfies. I've tried to do one. I'm like, I feel so weird. Anyone with me in the 40s? I'm like, I feel so weird. You know, David doesn't feel weird. He does selfies a lot, and he has a selfie stick, and he uses it a lot on himself, and I see the angles, yes, and um, all those angles with your food and with your, you know, your dog, and now it's with Harley. Uh, but denying... Denying self in a world of self-promotion, self like, you do you, you do you, boo, you go. No, no, no. That's not your way. That's not your way. It's God's way. You don't do you. You, you do God's way. You know, don't follow your heart. Follow God's heart. Your heart is the most wicked and deceitful of all things. Like, this is, this is the world we're in. So self says this. Self, self says, you know, self says don't go to church. You're all here. But self, self said that to you today. Self says don't. Don't give. Self says when he's give, talking about tithing, don't tithe. Self says, you know, don't, don't sacrifice. Don't give your time. Don't, don't do these things. Don't be uncomfortable. Don't be inconvenient. Self says all these things, but I'm believing that there's, there's this spirit like Paul, this revivalist, I am revival, that comes inside of us and denies self and says yes to God. Yes to being uncomfortable. Yes to being hated. Yes to losing some followers. Yes to whatever. I'm going to shake the dust off my feet and I'm going to keep getting back up. I'm not going to stay down in the ring called life. You've been punched and knocked down, but guess what? It's not over until you get back. You got to get back up. You got to get back up. Guess what? I can imagine him. I can imagine him laying on that ground, being stoned to death. And his flesh saying, guess what? Just leave it here. You're done. This isn't God's will. But this flashback of the people that were in his life and the moment of church where they laid hands on him and said, the Lord has anointed you for this special work and you are directed by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says he got back up. And I just want to tell you today, don't lay down and die. Don't lay down and give up. Don't lay down and throw down the towel. This is not your time to stay defeated. This is not your time to stop. There's so much ahead for you. Don't settle. Don't surrender to the enemy's plans. Don't, don't give up. Come on, don't be a sellout. Get back up. Dust the feet off your shoes and say, guess what, enemy? I'm going to shout a little louder. I don't care if there's haters. I don't care if there's people persecuting me. Guess what? I'm here to be a disciple. I'm here to be a revivalist. I'm here to shake up this city. I'm here to see, wake up this city. Anyone with me today? A revivalist. Let it be stirred in us. Stirred in us. Oh, he's crazy. 
crazy. This guy is crazy. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. This is what struck me. I'm, I'm almost done. He went on his first missionary journey, second missionary journey he started on. He ended up getting a different partner, Paul and Silas. They go on this journey. They went into the province of, of Asia. And, and the Bible says, what struck me when I read this, is it says God forbid them, the Holy Spirit forbid them to go into that place. But he didn't give you an ex explanation for why. Then they said they tried to go into Bithynia. They went to Bithynia and the Holy Spirit stopped them from going into that city. I just thought, isn't that crazy? Like, I, I'm, I'm super confused because I'm like, it's not like they're going in there to, you know, sell drugs. You know, they're in there to, like, plant churches. They're, they're like, going to preach the gospel. You'd think if you have the right motive and you're doing what God has called you to do, you would never have any closed doors. Has anyone thought that? You never. You just have doors swinging open by the Lord. Well, guess what? We're in this building, but this isn't the first building that we've ever been in. There's been many buildings we looked at, and they shut the door, and they shut the door. They said, no, this isn't the building that you're going to have. Years and years, I saw my husband on the Internet at midnight and one in the morning going, God, what are you doing? You keep shutting the door. We're trying to get into a building. We're in nightclub to nightclub to nightclub but guess what God had shut every door so we could be in this perfect room that God had this building for us guess what we don't understand the no's but can we sometimes celebrate when God gives us a no because he has our best interests at heart he knows what's good for us and sometimes it's hard to praise God when he says no I want him always say yes I want him to always be my sugar daddy I want him to always be a father that gives me what I want genie and a bottle rub me the right way but he's not that kind of God he's a God that says I will give you what you need not what benefits there's some things that you want that will not benefit you it's good if I give it to my kids it's a good thing but it may not benefit them and so God's going can you praise me with a no just like you praised him with a yes Come on, can you praise him? He gives you the discernment to say, don't marry that person. I'm thanking God because I wouldn't be with my husband. And this church wouldn't be here either. So thank God I'm with my husband. And you're really glad too, huh? Come on, I'm thanking God. I'm thanking God that relationship broke down. I'm thanking God I got fired from that job. I'm thanking God I moved out of that joint. I'm, I'm thanking God for the closed doors because now he's directing my steps in the right way. He's directing my steps. He's ordering my stops. If he orders my steps, then he has to order my stops. And here we are. What do you do? What do you do when you hit a no? Don't try to figure it out and don't try to move anywhere and don't try to do all these crazy things. You stop, wait, collaborate, listen. Wait, how's it go? Yeah, come on, girl. Stop. Okay, I don't dance or, or rap. Okay, listen. The, the Lord will speak. So this is what they did. They didn't go. He didn't give an explanation for why you shouldn't go there. God will much... Much of the time, he never told us why he closed the door to all those buildings and those church. We were trying to get in. And, but sometimes we waste so much energy on the wrong thing. Many of you are wasting energy trying to get answers on why he said no. And just use your energy to ask God where he wants you to go next. Because if I know the nature of God and I know he's, his character is good, then I know he wasn't trying to hurt me. He's trying to help me. He's actually protecting me. He, 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 he's, his hand is upon me. He's protected me. That's why that didn't work out. And so I have to trust that. And so he, the, the, the Bible says that he shut the door, and they all of a sudden, the, the, he, had a, he stopped, he listened, and, and the Bible says that Paul got a vision the Lord sent him, the, the Holy Spirit sent him a vision of a man in Macedonia that says, please come help me. Please come help me. This is what he got a vision of. So he heads, him and, him and Silas, head to, head to Macedonia. They get up on shore. They run into a women's Bible study. Well, they had a vision of a man that says, come help me. But they go into 
a women's Bible study. They were supposed to preach at a synagogue. In order to have a synagogue, you have to have at least 10 Jewish men that live in that city. So this text shows there wasn't 10 guys that lived in the city. So they come into, they were looking. How many have ever had a vision that doesn't match your reality? Anyone had a vision that's contradictory to the situation you're in? If you ever have that happen, I'll tell you what you do. You stick to the mission. You stay on mission. So what they do, they stayed on mission. They go, if we can't preach in the synagogue, we'll preach to this, this little prayer meeting. And so he started preaching. There was a woman named Lydia who hadn't really encountered God. She encountered the Lord. She got saved. And guess what? Her whole household got saved. That's what happens when you stay on mission. All of a sudden, they wake up the next day. They stay on mission again. He starts preaching the gospel. Paul, he starts about to get up. And then this lady gets up and goes, these are servants of the most high God. Okay. That's true, okay, thank you, thank you for saying that. Okay, and then he gets up the next day. These are servants of the most high God. She interrupts him again. Okay, okay, you know, could you please quiet down? You know, security, can you take them out? These are servants of the most high. The Bible says, you put up that scripture, day after day after day. She kept doing this for how many? Many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed Come on, have you ever been so annoyed? I'm so disturbed by this. That, let, let me just let you know this that really captivated me. This woman is possessed by a demon, yet she's still speaking the truth. That's why it's so important in this day and age, leaders, that we have the discernment of the Holy Spirit, that we can discern the spirits because the devil comes to seek to destroy through truth sometimes. He will deceive and twist. She had a spirit of python, spirit of divination, the Bible says. And so I love that Paul looked past the deception and he did not speak to the woman. He spoke to the spirit because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And so Paul became came so annoyed that he turned around and he said in the name of Jesus I command you to come out and I believe it's time to stand up and start speaking to the spirit and start taking our authority in Jesus name speak to the spirit of depression speak to the spirit of anxiety speak to the spirit of death that's in your house speak to the spirit of suicide speak to that spirit and all of a sudden he spoke and took that authority and all of a sudden he didn't speak to the person he spoke to the spirit don't get angry at the person God loves the person he hates the spirit wow. we get so bitter at the person no 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 just channel all that anger towards the spirit and start taking authority in the spirit because God loves that person and we love that person but a demonic spirit has come in and tried to kill them and so we are taking authority over that spirit he began to speak this. All of a sudden, she got set free in that moment. Got set free. I'm coming to close here. Are y'all doing okay today? Yeah. Spoke to the spirit. And people were not happy about this because this girl had owners um, where they used her gift for their financial gain. How many know the enemy does use you? He doesn't care for you. He wants to just use you. He, 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 he wants to use you. And in fact, you might even have people in your life that you might be connected with that are not there because they love you. Maybe they're there to use you or try to benefit from you. Those things are, let's break those off. Codependency. And all of a sudden, because this happened, the city was in an uproar. Here we're at the end of the story of Paul and Silas. Now, because of this, they were put in the middle of a city. People surrounded them, stripped them of their clothes, beat them, whipped them, spit on them. They were coughing up blood. They were, they were, they were almost dead. And they were put in an innermost part of the dungeon, the deepest, darkest, most part of the dungeon. And it wasn't their disobedience that got them there. It's, it was their obedience that got them beaten. It was their obedience that got them whipped. It was their obedience that got them in a dark place. What do you do when your calling becomes a crime? What do you do when your calling brings you into a dark room in a dark place? 
man, I mean, I get it. If I'm, I'm disobeying, I'm calling upon God like, hey, I'm sorry I did this wrong. But no, no, no. They did all the right things. They were doing what God told them to do. And still, their calling brought, brought them into a dark place. I wish I could tell you, if you are doing uh, what God's called you to do and you've said yes to God, I wish I could tell you that things are going to be beautiful all the time and things are going to be lovely and things are going to be bright. But guess what? That's not the case. This text proves true that you could do the right thing and it lands you in a dark place. But God wants to use it. This is when God does his greatest miracles is when you are in the dark room. In fact, the dark room develops the best pictures. My husband and I, when we're out here giving our time and years into this, just uh, just loving on the city as, as hard as we could and just serving God as much as we could, leading this church. Do We're doing what we're called to do. And then I get the call that my dad is almost dead. Like, how, how God? Like, how, how could this be? How could I be saying yes to you? And then this happens. How my dad could say yes to you for 45 years, but this happens. I just remember just really battling this and having a hard time with understanding the ways of God. Your call is not going to ever be easy because he never calls us to easy. He calls us to trust. He calls us to trust. How do you know how to trust him if you've never hit a situation where you've had to trust him? How do you know he's a healer if you never encountered devastation and sickness he's he's making his word alive in you right now he's 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 waking you up to who he is right now it's 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 more than just reading his word now you're having to live out now god i gotta trust you what should i do and i i just thought you know i battled when i say this i'm not trying to go oh pat myself on the back i just worship through it no 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 there was a lot of battling in my mind of god like is this, is this what's going to happen? And sometimes, let me say this. If my dad would not, if he died, I've come to a place where I have to trust that that was the will of God for my dad's life. It wasn't that we didn't pray hard enough or do what we needed to do. But, but God wanted to heal him in heaven. God will either heal him on this earth or God will heal them in heaven. Amen. Amen. But I had to go, God, I, I'm, I'm battling this, this. I'm doing what I'm called to do. But this hits. Things hit. Tragedy hits. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter where you grew up. It doesn't matter what family you grew up. It doesn't matter. It, it will hit everyone. Sickness will hit everyone. Pain will hit everyone. And God is not mad at you. God is not trying to punish you. In fact, he's trying to get you to draw to him and say, God, I trust you. Can you come down and be Lord and be God? And I pray your will would be done. And I would just pray those prayers. God, let your will be done. I know you want to heal him. But God, not my will. Let this be our prayer. But let yours be done. In fact, I just surrender to whatever it is. But I'm going to stand firm on that you're going to heal. And I just remember I came into that hospital room where he, he was lifeless and I just laid my hands and why I'm saying this is because there's a worship that wants to come out of you in this season like Paul and Silas because what do you do when you go through and you're walking in the call of God and what do you do when you you've hit a dark place what's in you will come out of you what's in you I've seen a lot come out of people it could be pain it could be complaints it could be cursing God leaving the faith but what came out of Paul and Silas when the pressure hit was worship I actually got a flashback of this story with my dad and I just said God I'm just going to start worshiping can I show you that video we showed it at conference but just wanted to show you I 
dad in the middle of feeling like one of my darkest and lowest places and the presence of God and the anointing of God just filled up that hospital room in such a way that I had not felt it in a long time. And, and all of a sudden they started fidgeting with knobs. I asked them what they were doing. They were turning down the blood pressure machine because they said my dad's blood pressure was starting to move back up to normal. And I said, that's not normal though, that's God. And she looked at me like I lost it. And I said, you can think I lost it, but the Holy Spirit's doing a work right now. We put worship music, we kept praising even, and we didn't understand. Even when I was confused, I was like, God, I'm just gonna try to trust you, praise you. And seven days he was on a ventilator, seven days he was in a coma. For seven days, his kidneys weren't working. For seven days, his heart wasn't beating on his own. But on the seventh day, the doctor comes up to me and says, this is Miracle Sunday. He's not a Christian. I said, what do you mean it's Miracle Sunday? He goes, he passed every test, every breathing test with flying colors. I, he said, your dad is not going to die. He's actually going to live. And we're taking the ventilator out. He took the ventilator out. My dad breathes on his own. He has brain, his brain sharp. His heart is beating strong. He walked out of that hospital bed. The doctor said his kidneys would not work he'd be on dialysis but guess what I love doctors I think doctors are awesome but guess what our great physician has the final say amen and God healed him from the inside out and I want to let you know I'm just here to help you in the cave moments to not not lose faith and not be defeated and not be Paul just even though he got knocked down somehow he got that tenacity to just get back up can we at least give a worship because guess what the enemy shackled their arms the enemy shackled their legs but guess what the enemy forgot to do he forgot to shackle Paul and Silas's mouth Oh, so what they had left, they gave God. And they said, God, you're my worship you. You're my all. You're my everything. He began to worship. And what happened? Guess what? All of a sudden, there was a prison break. All of a sudden, there was, there was a shaking. There was an earthquake. And, and, and their shackles were broken. And guess what? Their shackles weren't just broken. It says everyone in the jail cells, the shackles were broken. Chains were we're broken and guess why that's so exciting because your worship today is not just for you it's for everyone outside of these doors your worship has the power to set other people free while you're lifting your hands in this room God can heal someone in a hospital bed while you're lifting your hands in this room God can meet someone that needs to encounter God in another place when you're doing come on when you worship God something's shifting we need some worshipers revivalists are worshipers revivalists can worship in a dark place revivalists know how to lift up their voice even when they feel shackled down revivalists know how to lift up a sound even though they feel like death is coming over them come on is there any worshipers in this house today come on is there any worshipers in this house today oh I know you're low I know you're in a cave I know you feel like you're confined but can we lift up our hands in this place hallelujah come on just get you to lift fearless online church man what an amazing day so far right now is an opportunity for us to give back We've been receiving so much. I, I don't know about you, but I've been blessed from what's going on in this stream and what God is doing in this church. Proverbs 19, 17 says this, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he, the Lord, will repay him for his deeds. This church is all about reaching the needs of our city and cities worldwide. In fact, last year alone, we were able to pass out 2.2 million pounds of food. Come on, somebody, that's a lot of food. We, we gave out food and we were able to pray for every single person. We also washed their cars, pretty much the modern day uh, version of washing someone's feet. Man, what an awesome experience that we've got to have through generous givers just like you. You may not be able to be here on ground zero level, feeding people, clothing people, loving on people, but you sure can be a part of this by giving your finances and lending, in a sense, to the Lord. And we know that you can't outgive God. I've found over 41 years of life that no matter how much I give to the Lord, He always gives back. He gives back so much more, no matter how much I release. I really believe that the spirit of generosity is alive in our generation. 
We need to meet people's physical needs so they'll open their heart so God can meet their spiritual need. Would you help us do that? We want to give out more clothing. We want to give out more food. We want to touch thousands more people. In fact, this year, I'm believing to give out 4 million pounds of food. Would you step out in faith with us? Would you become a partner today? Everything in life to get anywhere really takes partnership. Every one of us are here because of partnership. Life happens because of partnership. I have a dream that we would reach people's physical need to give them a spiritual truth who Jesus is, who Jesus wants to be in their life, that love that we so boldly profess as Christians. Would you pray today about your gift, whatever size, large or small, that you're going to partner with us once a month to see God do something incredible in a city. You can sign up for Fearless Partners today. Why wait another day? Let's be generous like our God and watch that generous God while we bless others continue to fill our our vats, our barns, our, our dream, our business, our family, fuller than we ever could have ourselves. God bless you as you give today. Let me pray over your giving as I believe people are moved today to become generous and partner with the Fearless Partners. Jesus, we pray over this giving. We pray over these people that are going to sow into this ministry. We, we say right now, God, Lord, as we lend to the poor, as we help those in need, Lord, that you would help those that are giving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. We hope that it blessed you and we hope you have an incredible rest of your day. God bless.